Welcome back, folks, to Let's Play Star Trek Judgment Rights. And when last we left off, we transported down to this barren, lifeless rock. Lifeless save for this building. Not only seems to have uh, two machines containing microorganisms, but uh, also a DNA replicator and sequencer machine. Not in that order, mind you. You'd sequence and then replicate. And there's uh, two... Uh, holographic projections. One of them uh, most certainly uh, is portraying an angelic image, and the other one most certainly is portraying the opposite. Let's uh, have a look around, shall we? But first, let's scan this machine. I get the feeling that it's going to be like the other one. Energy levels behind this glass are more than sufficient for having power the distress signal we received. Also, we should probably use the medical scanner. I completely forgot to do that. Let's see what McCoy has to say. The enclosure behind this porthole is teeming with life. Billions and billions of creatures. There's something wrong with the piece of this genetic code that controls reproduction. I've never seen such a low reproductive rate in an organism that's this simple. Hmm. Fair enough. Let us talk to uh, this projection, shall we? So where's the emergency? That's, um, not a good communication to start with there, Kirk. Greetings. I am James T. Kirk of the USS Enterprise. What can we do for you? That's better. All right. I know you're just a projection. Let's speak with your real masters. That is really not a good thing to say. So where's the... Greetings. I am James T. Kirk of the USS Enterprise. What can we do for you? Just like with the uh, other projection, we're going to be friendly. I am Azra of the Omegan people, an ancient and venerable race which labors to prevent the domination of this world by the forces of darkness. We require you to expunge this place of our mortal enemies. That doesn't sound very friendly. Captain, the most worthwhile purpose in life is to fight against the forces of darkness. We must help him. We are not allowed to interfere in the affairs of the um, life forms on this planet, Johns. Enemies? This world is so barren that all the life on it is located right here. If you have mortal enemies, we've not seen them. Who are you talking about? That's a good question. Our Prime Directive prohibits us from taking part in wars on one side or the other. It would be seen as intervention. We are willing to negotiate a compromise. That is what we can do. You will forgive me if I don't fall for a pretty face. I'm not about to expunge anyone. And I will take no action until I've heard both sides of the story. Let's be diplomatic about this. Enemy. Our Prime Directive prohibits us from taking part in wars on one side or the other. It would be seen as intervention. We are willing to negotiate a compromise. That is, uh... That is reasonable. You imperil your soul by conversing with the enemy, that sugar-tongued Visner. I cannot protect you, but I do not imagine I can dissuade you either. Go. Do what you must. I do not have that much time, but will be here if you seek to comply with my request. Hmm. There's no need to leave. We've already talked with Visner. I have to say that I find many of your claims insupportable. Uh-oh. We're gonna have an argument. Insupportable? How can you defend a race whose very existence is based upon deceit and foul lies? Are you so sure about that? Foul lies? Their position contradicts yours, but there are similarities. You dwell on your differences so much, you just can't see them. Hmm. Frankly, Azra Visner is quite rational and makes your impassioned pleas for genocide sound psychotic. That's not a good response there. For a being of goodness, you're rather bloodthirsty. Maybe you should try practicing what you Let's, preach. uh, point out the differences and similarities of the Foul lies. Their position contradicts yours, but there are similarities. You dwell on your differences so much, you just can't see them. That's true. Captain, they're as different as angels and demons. That is a rather blunt assessment, but yeah, they kind of are. Similarities? They are beings of shadow. They mock our perfection. They are our antithesis, created after we were to destroy us and our potential for good. But they're also incomplete, much like you are. You repeatedly proclaim yourself good and suggest you are morally superior to the Alphans. Why don't you act like it? Mm, let's see what else we've got to uh, suggest. If you're so perfect, how come you need our help? That's a good question. You said they were created after you were. How do you know that? That's also a good question. You repeatedly proclaim yourself We're going to do the third one. If you, you said they were created after you were. How do you know that? It's a good question. We know we came first because...
because that is what our sacred scriptures tell us. In the light we were born, and commanded to shun that which dwells in darkness. This clearly tells us that we came first. Surely you can see that. Or is it that you have some other interpretation of the event that birthed the Omegans? Uh, well, there's no evidence to say specifically that the scriptures that you read might not have been lying. Does your sacred scriptures explicitly say that no beings were created before you? Probably not. Dare you suggest they came first? Maybe you both came at the same time. Let's see what we've got. Two single-celled organisms, each incapable of survival on their own. One lives in light, the other lives in darkness. Each must live a limited and unstable life without the other. Yep, Kirk's putting the pieces together quite well. Captain, do you know what you're doing? He's putting the pieces together. Allow us to unite you again. Your combined strengths will make you a viable entity again. They will! I mean, these ones here have a, um, like, healthy metabolism, long lifespan, but can uh, have poor reproduction. Whereas the other ones have uh, excellent reproductive capabilities, but a short lifespan and very poor metabolism. Makes sense? The persuasiveness of your arguments has opened for me a door through which I spy a future and a truth that I have long denied. You are correct. Perhaps being only half of a whole, I could not see the solution. Yes, I desire your help for my people. Help us. We will. We will. That there is some, uh, genetic material. The glowing light coming from the sample dish tells you that the colony is thriving. Excellent. Let's, uh, scan that, shall we? With both tricorders! This colony of creatures appears viable for the short term. Okay. Let's scan it with the other one. These Omegans are incredible. They metabolize almost everything, which explains how they give off that glow. Fair enough. Let's go and take it, shall we? No effect. No? There we go. Had to aim a little further up. The sample dish feels warm to the touch. Hmm. Fair enough. Let's go into the other room and, uh, talk to uh, the other ones. I believe, uh, Visna? That was his name. Visna. little pause again. Excellent. Let's move on. Actually, let's save first. You never know what might happen. Save new game. Replace. There we go. Actually, uh, we don't want to replace a game. We want to save a new save one. New game. There we go. Okay. Now let's move on. Is Vizna going to reappear? No. Also, we should scan this with the, uh, medical tricorder. See what McCoy has to say. The glass-lined enclosure beyond this porthole is teeming with life. Literally billions and billions of creatures reside herein. The genetic pattern seems unusually stunning. It's, it's almost as though something's missing. There is something missing. Also, we need, uh, to get that, um, projection back. We need to use Spock to get it back. Use your science, Spock. I am reactivating Visner, Captain. Thank you. Hello. Let's talk to Visner. Was it not as I said it would be? Are not the Omegans a fanatical race, uninterested in anything but fulfilling some self-contradictory messianic destiny for themselves? I assume they filled your heads with their warped theology. No, no, not quite. Frankly, Visner, Azra is certainly committed to his cause, but hardly the blood-mad fanatic you describe him to be. That's one option. Warped theology. It is true they differ greatly from you, but your worldviews are based on common beliefs. You see things from different perspectives, that's all. That seems like the correct response. Frankly, Visner, I Warped theology. Yeah, we'll use that one. It is true they differ greatly from you, but your worldviews are based on common beliefs. Yep. You see things from different perspectives, that's all. This is going to trigger an argument. Are you utterly ungrounded in logic? They are creatures of superstition. They invaded our world, 
then sought to drive us from it. How can you suggest we are anything alike? You are, I believe, both parts of one being, rather than two separate, uh, beings. You question my grounding in logic, but you don't apply logic to an examination of Alphan beliefs. Aren't they concerned with the same things you are? Yeah, survival. You're supposed to be the reasonable one. Your facts can't be very persuasive if you aren't willing to try and find common ground. That's another reasonable-ish uh, response, but a little bit less reasonable. You said they usurped your place in the world, which suggests prior ownership by you. What evidence do you have to support that concept? That is actually um, an interesting uh, response there. Hmm. Yeah, we'll use that one. We know we came first because they invaded us. An invasion suggests they came to take away that which we possessed. Clearly you can see that. Can we? How do you know they didn't exist on this world before you encountered them? That is a good question. Do you further suppose they came first and we invaded them? No, quite. I see there are only single-celled organisms here, each with a defect. Perhaps at one time, the Alpha and Omega life forms were united. A strong, viable species that became divided. Only by reuniting can you hope to survive. And only through mutual cooperation and our help can you reunite. Indeed. Captain, this thing is evil. We can't unite them. We can! Your position is unassailable and points out the one and only purpose for our races. Thank you, Captain Kirk, for making me see that. Yes, I desire your help for my people. Help us. We will. There is a, uh, another colony. We could try talking to it. You get no response. No surprise there. Let's use the various, um, tricorders. See what happens. This colony of creatures appears viable for the short term. Fair enough. What about the other one? What do you have to say, McCoy? Boy, these elephants are healthy little beggars. They're multiplying at a phenomenal rate. Well, let's get it. We now have a sequence of both the Alpha and Omegas. You take the Alpha sample, which feels cold to the touch. Fair enough. Now, we have a machine over here that we could use to uh, sequence all this. And we should. We most certainly should. We did say, after all, that we would help them. We definitely said we would help them. Let's save, though. Save new game. Replace. Right. What we need to do is we need to, uh... I do believe we need to put them in, uh... The various tubes. They did say this is what we were to do. Like, these protect the uh, sample. So we'll put one in here. Excellent. This sample sequence is like a dream. Yes, it does. It's almost like it was made for this. What about the other sample? Which sample did I actually use? That's a good question. Was it this one? No, I don't think that's necessary. Or is it the other one we need to use? No, I don't think that's necessary. Hmm. Hmm. Well, we could try and sequence it, I suppose. Captain, we have to run a set of source samples through the sequencer before I can make a composite sample with the replicator. Okay. Wow, this is almost identical to an 8000 sequencer. Cutting edge Federation technology. Just input a sample, and the sequencer analyzes it so it can be spliced or altered on the genetic level with the replicator. Hmm. Oh, we're gonna need to use the other one, aren't we? Ah. There's something cold and forbidding about this sample. It almost seems evil. Also, I did not know that we could use Johns on the actual samples. We need to use this sample here. That's what we need to do. They both need to go in here and they come out there. That's what I was getting wrong. All right, let's see I what- I don't know why, but I could not get a good sampling. Really? Really? Ensign, let Dr. McCoy try that troublesome sequence. I think we should let McCoy do this. I can do the job, sir, if I can have some peace and quiet here. 
There's something going on here. Mr. Johns, I think I'm getting a clear picture here of your difficulties. Do you realize that insubordination is an offense punishable by a court-martial? Let's not be too harsh here, Kirk. It looks to me that you're deliberately trying to mislead us. That's not a good career move. It's not. Calm down, Ensign. No one is criticizing you. I just need answers. That seems like a sensible one. Let's just find out what's going on. I appreciate the offer, Captain, but I know what's right and wrong here, so I don't need your help. Hmm. Ensign, I appreciate your situation, but this is not the time for philosophy. You have a job to do. That's not gonna get him on side. Ensign, you are here as a genetic engineer, not as a philosopher. I expect my orders to be obeyed, and if you have a problem with them, I don't expect to be deliberately misled. That's one way of solving it? I could really use a Tellarite security officer right now. That's not really gonna help. Ensign, I- Ensign, you are here as a genetic engineer, not as a philosopher. I expect my orders to be obeyed, and if you have a problem with them, I don't expect to be deliberately misled. Yeah, just- just let us know what's up. I regret my attempt to mislead you. I will accept whatever punishment you feel is necessary. You did not say the rest of your line there. Silence only hides evil deeds, and I should not have been so cowardly, but I cannot be a party to this immoral act. What is it you think I'm asking you to do, Ensign? That's a good question. You don't understand, Captain. Look at the Alphans and look at the Omegans. You didn't finish your sentence there either. R what? <laughs> Just, uh, I was about to start the sentence there and then I failed. No, no wonder Edson Johns managed to... Well, decided not to do it. What right do we have to dilute the glory of those beautiful golden Omegans by mixing their DNA with that of a dark, cruel race like the Alphans? There's so much evil in the universe. You're asking me to destroy a race of good and beauty by mixing their genetics with something ugly, something evil. I can't do it. Yeah, that's not exactly what you said either there. You're actually meant to say, according to the subtitles, that it's morally unacceptable. I cannot be a party to it. Ensign, I think you're confusing things. The Alphans and Omegans are single-celled creatures. While the projections may have seemed sophisticated and human, they are constructs. You can look at the sequence and tell what you have there for DNA could never produce such a creature, can't you? That's not gonna convince him. I am asking you to do nothing of the kind, Ensign. You believe in the struggle of good against evil, and I respect that. But the application of your philosophical perspective is misplaced here. The Alphans and Omegans are single-celled creatures. They are no more capable of good or evil than a triple. Can't you see that? Now that is a respectful answer. Look, mister, even if the projection should be taken at face value, both sides have agreed to this. McCoy says they're only single-celled organisms, and you're smart enough to know if he's right or wrong. Use your instruments. Be a geneticist, and then make a decision. Let's be respectful and use the second option. I am asking you to do nothing of the kind, Ensign. You believe in the struggle of good against evil, and I respect that. But the application of your philosophical perspective is misplaced here. The Alphans and Omegans are single-celled creatures. They are no more capable of good or evil than a triple. Can't you see that? Well, that is a, a good argument. Let's, um, let's present that to him. Single cells. You're right. I've been a real idiot. I suppose I should take a refresher course in ASOP. It wouldn't hurt. Some of the wisest people in history have written for children. Never judge an input card by its label. I guess that was the trap I fell into and kept me from doing my job and made me deceive my captain. Well, now hopefully you'll, um, you'll do in what, um, we'd ask you to do in sequence the, uh, the DNA. If it's any consolation, you're not very good at deception, Ensign. Well, it was pretty obvious. Thank you, sir. I hope you'll give me a chance to correct my mistakes. Do you think we're really meant to combine the two races? Yep. You've programmed the sequences. You can tell whether they're compatible. Yes, you can. Sir, the sequencer indicates that they need to be combined for their continual survival. But how did you know? How did he know? I listened to Dr. McCoy. It seemed the logical conclusion given the evidence. There was a lot of evidence. Thank you, Captain. No problem. Now, um, you should sequence that. Wow, this is almost like... Or just sequence it? I was unaware you had studied genetics at the Academy. Uh, he didn't. He most certainly didn't. Um, no, he didn't. This machine? Captain, we have to run a set of source samples through the sequencer before I can make a composite sample with the replicator. 
Oh, do we have to do this again? Yes, yes, we do. Yes, we do. The alpha sample is sequenced, sir. Thank you. And now the other sample. Just need to uh, clear out the inventory there. There we go. We'll get there in the end. This sample sequence is like a dream. Yes, it does. And now... I was unaware you had... Oh, oops. Wrong person again. There we go. The two samples have joined together as easily as if they had once been a whole and had been separated before. But that's because they had been. Any race that had this technology 50,000 years ago could possibly have been able to perform such a dissection and kept both halves alive. Definitely a challenge. Captain, with the samples sequenced together, I'm ready to use the replicator to produce a sample with the combined genetic data. Fair enough. That will come next time, however. For when we come back, folks, we shall get that combined sample and see what Save we can do with it. Replace previous game. I wonder if it has something to do with that room over there. So, I'll catch you next time, folks. And I'll see you then. Later.